we shall commence this module by discussing about the problem of unemployment. Unemployment is a glaring problem in almost all the nations today. Developed, developing or underdeveloped countries all face the problem with the difference lying in the extent of unemployment. The global unemployment is expected to increase by 3 million in 2015 and by a further 8 million in the following 4 years. Youth, especially the young women, continue to be disproportionately affected by unemployment. Approximately 74 million young people who were aged between 15 to 24 were looking for work in 2014. The youth unemployment rate is practically three times higher than the unemployment rate of their adult counterparts. The heightened youth unemployment situation is common to all regions and is occurring despite the trend improving in the educational attainment. This is creating social discontent. This paper takes us through the basic concept of unemployment and the possible measures how to create more jobs and bring down the unemployment rate. Unemployment can be defined as a state where people who are willing to work are unable to find work and earn a living. It occurs when the supply of labor is more than the demand for labor. To know the extent of unemployment, we will calculate what is known as the unemployment rate. It is calculated as the percentage by dividing the number of unemployed individuals by all individuals currently in the labor force. There are many debates regarding the causes, consequences and solutions for unemployment. After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the basic categorization of unemployment, the reasons and consequences of unemployment, reasons for soaring unemployment in India, policy actions needed to cure this issue. Next, let us move on to discuss the theories on unemployment. Time and again, there have been various economic literature on unemployment to explain the root cause of unemployment. These have addressed the problem. First, classical theory. According to this theory, market is characterized with a smooth labor demand and supply curve. The wage rate adjusts itself to ensure there is equilibrium between the demand for labor and the supply for labor. Since the market is free to adjust, everyone seeking a job finds a job. The figure represent a labor market where demand curve and supply curve of labor are given. The equilibrium is marked as capital E, which is the point of intersection of both the curves. At E, labor demand is equals to the labor supply. In such a scenario, there is no involuntary unemployment. At any point above E, there will be unemployment. Classical economics argue that unemployment in this case can only occur due to the obstruction in the functioning of the labor market. These obstructions can be interventions such as unionization, bureaucratic work rules, minimum wage law, taxes and other regulations that according to them discourage the hiring of workers. This theory proposes getting rid of all regulations and social programs that hinder the functioning of a free market. The recommendation is based on the principle of laissez-faire that is leave it alone. Second, Keynesian theory. This theory of unemployment, on the other hand, sheds light upon the cyclical nature of unemployment and recommends that government intervention in the economy will reduce unemployment during the recessions. 
it emphasizes on the recurrent shocks that suddenly reduce the aggregate demand for goods and services and thus reduce the demand for workers. A reduction in the demand calls for organizations to cut down on production and cost which means they lay off the workers. Thus, according to this theory, unemployment is the result of the fall in aggregate demand. Keynesian model recommends that government intervention designed to increase the demand for workers. These can include financial stimuli, publicly funded job creation and expansionist monetary policies. Keynes believed that the root cause of unemployment is the desire of investors to receive more money rather than produce more products which is not possible without public bodies producing new money. Moving on to discuss the types of unemployment. In addition to the above mentioned theories of unemployment, there are a few categorization of unemployment that are used to more precisely show the effects of unemployment within the economic system. First, voluntary employment. At a very basic level, unemployment can be broken down into voluntary unemployment, unemployment due to people willingly leaving previous jobs and now looking for new ones. Second, involuntary unemployment. It is the unemployment that occurs due to the people getting laid off or fired from their previous jobs and needing to find work elsewhere. Involuntary unemployment as a larger problem than the voluntary unemployment since voluntary unemployment likely reflects utility maximizing household choices. Third, frictional unemployment. Frictional unemployment is the unemployment that occurs when people are moving from one job to another for a better opportunity. The transitional period when a person is looking for a job and when he finds one, he is considered unemployed. However, such employment usually lasts for shorter periods and is not a cause of concern from the economy's point of view. Students looking for jobs for the first time, an individual looking for a new job because of location change or a woman re-entering the workforce after having children are all examples of frictionally employed people. Fourth, cyclical unemployment. Cyclical or demand deficient unemployment is the unemployment that occurs due to business cycles. In periods of high economic growth or economic boom, there is high demand for goods and services and companies hire more people to produce more goods in order to meet the increasing demand. However, during recession or depression, when there is low demand, companies tend to lay off the workers to cut down the production and its cost. This leads to a situation where supply of labor is more than the demand for labor, thus it generates unemployment. Since this kind of unemployment is associated with business cycles, therefore it is called as cyclical unemployment. As the economy recovers, the unemployment tends to naturally disappears. Thus, the cause of concern for economists is not cyclical unemployment, but the root cause of recession which causes it. Fifth, structural unemployment. There are two ways to look at structural unemployment. One way is that such kind of unemployment occurs because some labor markets have more workers than there are jobs available. And for some reason, wages do not in decrease to bring the markets into equilibrium. Another way is that structural unemployment results 
when workers possesses skill that are not in high demand in the marketplace and lack skills that are in high demand. In other words, structural unemployment results due to a mismatch between the worker's skill and employer's needs. Structural unemployment is considered as a significant problem because structural unemployment tends to be largely of the long term nature and retaining workers is not a cheap or easy task. Sixth, disguised unemployment. This kind of unemployment mostly occurs in developing and underdeveloped economies where the agriculture sector is the key source of employment. Since agriculture is a family occupation and income is on sharing basis, there are usually more people working on a piece of land than required. The marginal productivity of an additional worker is zero or negligible. Works who contribute nothing towards the output are said to be disguisedly unemployed. Seventh, seasonal unemployment. It is unemployment that occurs because the demand for some workers varies widely over the course of the year. For example, pool lifeguards. Seasonal unemployment can be thought of as a form of structural unemployment, mainly because the skills of the seasonal employees are not needed in certain labor markets for at least some part of the year. Seasonal unemployment is considered less chronic as it forms a regular pattern and resurfaces from time to time. Eighth, technological unemployment. This kind of unemployment occurs when due to the adoption of a new technology, workers are displaced. This one is the most prevalent today. The use of new technology is not only bringing down cost but also producing better products. Thus, there is greater incentive to move towards better technology. However, the adoption in technology is at much faster rate than the creation of new opportunities of the workers displaced. The economies are not able to absorb the millions losing jobs. Let us now understand the causes of unemployment. The theories of unemployment and categorization gives us the basic understanding of the kind of unemployment that exists in different countries. The major concern of any country is structural unemployment as this is a long term unemployment and various policy actions are required to bring down such kind of unemployment. We will now discuss various reasons for structural unemployment. First, slow growth of GDP. In developed economies, there is a strong link relation between GDP growth and employment creation. A sluggish growth of GDP can dampen the job creation. Second, rapid changes in technology. The use of modern technology is one of the biggest reasons for the increase in unemployment. It's a cause that is common worldwide. As technology is progressing, there is lesser need for the manual labor and more demand for the skilled labor. The developed nations are faster in adjusting to the new technology and have lesser people unemployed as they give better education and training facilities to their labor force. However, the countries where major labor force is unskilled, the issue is even bigger. The new technology is displacing hundreds of people as they don't have the necessary skills or the institutions to develop these skills. Third, lack of capital. Most countries which face high unemployment are those who have shortage of capital. When new projects start, they create millions of jobs for both skilled and unskilled labor. However, countries facing shortage of capital 
cannot invest in such projects to create such jobs. Moreover, the lack of capital inhibits a country's capacity to build institutions to train labor and meet the growing demand of the market. Thus, such countries have large pool of unskilled labor force. Fourth, overpopulation. Another reason for high unemployment is high rate of population growth. Large population puts a pressure on the economy's resources and further aggravates the unemployment issue. Fifth, low level of education. As the technology is advancing, there is a demand for skilled labor force. However, if the educational level in a country is low, then it cannot have a skilled labor set of labor force. Thus, unemployment increases due to low level of education. Sixth, poverty. Another major reason for high unemployment in a country is mass level of poverty. Poverty means people cannot afford good educational facilities. This means that level of education is low and thus these people cannot get a job as they do not meet the desired level of skill set. Thus, either it increases the structural unemployment or disguised unemployment. Seventh, poor performance of agriculture sector. This issue is relevant for all countries that have agriculture as a primary sector. This sector creates disguised unemployment at large scale. For example, in India, agriculture provides employment to approximately 60% of population where it contributes to the GDP is just 15.1%. This means that the marginal productivity of an additional labor is negligible. Just like India, most of the developing and underdeveloped countries are agrarian in nature and stuck in between the transition from agriculture to service sector oriented economy. Let us understand the consequences on unemployment. First, increase in poverty. Unemployment as defined earlier is the state where people willing to work are unable to find work. Thus, if people cannot find work, it means they don't have money which increases the extent of poverty. Second, increase in un inequality. Unemployment has led to increase in the income gap among people. Since the rich are able to afford better education, hence better skills, they get easily absorbed in the labor market. However, the poor or the less privileged that have lesser access are unable to find jobs matching their skills. Thus, this further increase the inequality gap. Third, low level of living standard. No income means people cannot afford basic amenities such as clean drinking water and sanitation, etc. Thus, countries that have high unemployment rate have a low standard of living. Fourth, less access to health care. Poverty due to the lack of unemployment opportunity further inhibits the unemployment from accessing the health care services. Poor health itself constrains physical strength of the workers which lower down further the employment opportunities. Fifth, social cost. As we all know, an empty mind is a devil's workshop. The increase in unemployment is directly related to the growth of crime rate. People unable to find jobs find themselves stealing, murdering and getting all sorts of crime to make money. Social cost is also in terms of loss in self-esteem of a person looking for a job. He or she may have the skills, but due to lack of demand for his skills, he or she is unable to find the job for he, his or her potential. In case the person in question does not want to settle for anything lower, he or she might remain unemployed, which also lowers the self-esteem. Sixth, 
loss of national output. Unemployment also involves a loss of potential national output. This is because when an economy is operating below full employment level, it implies GDP is below potential. It is a waste of scarce resources. Moreover, lack of opportunities may cause some people to permanently move out of the labor market because they have lost the motivation for looking for a job. This can have a negative effect on the long run aggregate supply and thereby damage to the economy's growth potential. Some economists call this type of process as the hysteresis effect. When unemployment is high, there will be an increase in the spare capacity. In other words, the output gap will become negative and this can have deflationary forces on the prices, profits and outputs. Seventh, fiscal cost. Government loss comes in the form of loss of potential tax revenue and higher spending on the welfare benefits and unemployment benefits. This results in the increase in the pressure on the budget deficit. This increases the risk of government raising the taxes to meet the deficit or cutting down the various expenditures. Now we shall discuss the unemployment in India at a glance. The unemployment situation in India currently is quite grim. It has averaged around 9% from the period from 1983 to 2014. Most of the unemployment is structural in nature, which means that the economy is not able to absorb the growing labor force. Since India is an agrarian economy, major source of occupation is this sector. However, the growth in this sector has been very slow. The agriculture sector employs approximately 60% of the labor force, but only contributes around 15.1% to the GDP. One third of the labor force in this sector is disguised unemployed. The wages are extremely low due to the large labor supply. Agricultural laborers and self-cultivating farmers constitutes approximately 42 and 47 percent of the rural poor. Most of these people are stuck in the vicious circle of poverty. Low wages in this sector have further increased poverty and inequality. The low wages have forced people to seek work outside which has led to the growth in the informal sector. This sector consists of all the people who have shifted out of the agriculture and yet not found work in the secondary or tertiary sectors. It consists of cobblers, hawkers, barbers, plumbers, etc. Low productivity of the agriculture, overpopulation, high income inequality, low educational level and acute poverty are the factors that have contributed to the unemployment. Government has tried to implement many employment generation schemes of which MGNREGA Mangrega being the biggest. This scheme endured 100 days of employment to the workers enrolled under this scheme. Food for Work is another such program providing wage employment in the drought affected areas where wages are paid partly in cash and partly in food grains. Prime Minister Employment Generation Program is another initiative by the Government of India to promote self-employment ventures or projects in both the rural and urban India. Government has also initiated training programs to enhance the skills of the people. But poor implementation of these programs has not only failed the policies but has increased the fiscal burden also. Let us look ahead. Now the big question that arises is how can an ailing job market be cured and what can be done to create more jobs 
and promote decent work. There are few policy actions that can be taken by the government to reduce unemployment. First, increase aggregate demand. Increase in aggregate demand means increase in the output to meet the demand. This means organizations need to hire more workers to increase production. This can be done through an expansionary monetary policy or an expansionary fiscal policy. Second, government expenditure of the infrastructure and public works project. Most developing countries do not have adequate infrastructure. So, one of the best way to create jobs is public expenditure on infrastructure such as roads, buildings, hospitals, schools, etc. This not only creates the demand for skilled workers like engineers and managers who design such structures but also unskilled workers like masons and plumbers. Third, developing institutes and better training programs. Another step toward combating unemployment is to develop institutes which gives training to the workers. There is mass level unemployment due to a mismatch between the demand for skill and supply. To bridge the gap, a government needs to build institutions which give professional training so that can get a better opportunity in the market. Building such institutes itself gives employment opportunities to the people who have the ability to give the training like teachers for example. Fourth, support to small and medium scale enterprises. Large organizations have easier access to capital and economies of scale in operation. However, banks reluctant to fund the small scale operations that have little or no cash and uncertain prospects and a relatively small number of customers. The central government should shoulder some of the risk of small business loans and provide new incentive for banks to lend to the smaller businesses. Government should support the struggling business enterprises as they have the potential to create many job opportunities. Fifth, providing unemployment benefits. Unemployment benefits should be provided to those who registered them as unemployed with an undertaking that they will actively look for work. This is a form of social security for the unemployed. It prevents them from falling into acute poverty. Increase in unemployment also means fall in the purchasing power of these people. By government enduring social security to these people, government can prevent fall in aggregate demand and ensure that the unemployed do not resort to crime and other means of income. Unemployment is a disease affecting millions of people worldwide and it is the time joint effort to be made to cure this kind of problem. Let us now summarize what we have studied in this module. Unemployment can be defined as a state where people who are willing to work are unable to find work and earn a living. It occurs when supply of labor is more than the demand for labor. According to the classical theory market is characterized with a smooth labor demand and supply curve between the demand and supply of labor. Since the market is free to adjust, everyone seeking a job gets a job. The Keynesian theory of unemployment, on the other hand, sheds light upon the cyclical nature of unemployment and recommends the government interventions in the economy that will reduce unemployment during recessions. It emphasized on the recurrent shocks that suddenly reduce the aggregate demand for goods and services and thus reduce the demand for workers. A reduction in demand calls for organizations to cut down on the production and cost which means that they lay off workers. Thus, according to the theory, unemployment is a result of fall in aggregate demand. Keynesian models recommend government interventions which are designed to increase demand for workers 
These can include financial stimuli, publicly funded job creation and expansionist monetary policies. There are different types of unemployment, namely voluntary employment, involuntary unemployment, frictional unemployment, cyclical unemployment, structural unemployment, disguised unemployment, seasonal unemployment and technological unemployment. Following are the causes of unemployment. Slow growth of GDP, rapid changes in technology, lack of capital, overpopulation, low level of education, poverty and poor performance of agriculture sector. Following are the consequences on unemployment. Increase in poverty, increase in inequality, low level of living standard, less access to health care, social cost, loss of national output, fixed cost. Government has also tried to implement many employment generation schemes of which Manrega being the biggest. This scheme ensures 100 days of employment to the workers who are enrolled as unemployed under this scheme. Prime Minister Employment Generation Program is another initiative by the Government of India to promote self-employment ventures or projects in both the rural and urban areas. There are few policy actions that can be taken by the government to reduce unemployment. These are as follows. Increase aggregate demand. Government expenditure of infrastructure and public works projects. Developing the institutes and better training programs. Support to small and medium size or scale enterprises. Providing unemployment benefits. Unemployment is a disease affecting millions of people worldwide and now it is the time to joint effort in order to make sure that this problem would be cured.